Hey there, it's Matt here. Today I'm going to talk about an AI rendering extension for SketchUp called Verus that uses text-based prompts to turn your SketchUp model into this. AI. We're doing it today. This particular extension is called Verus by Evolve Lab, the same folks who make uh, Helix. Um, they primarily make AEC extensions for SketchUp and for some other softwares, but this one's uh, an AI image generator, like I said. On the forum for Verus, they have a really good kind of getting started for Verus for SketchUp um, posts. So check that out if you're looking for kind of a, a good place to get started. I'm just gonna show some cool things that I have used it for in the past couple of days. Um, and you can get an idea of, of how it works and what it does. Um, Verus is a paid extension. Uh, they have a free trial, but then you can do like a monthly subscription or a yearly for a little bit of a discounted price. So um, yeah. Check out this video. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. Uh, give us a like. And um, yeah, hey, let's pop in. Verus. So again, here's that forum post. Uh, it goes through in detail all the, everything you need to know to get started with uh, the extension. You can find that on their website, just on um, forum on here. Verus, as you see, this is how you download it for Apple or Windows right on their site. SketchUp 2023, 22, and 21 are supported versions. But yeah, once you get it in, it will show up under extensions and then Evolve Lab Verus here. Um, let me just model something real quick and then I'll show you how to get it into this window. All right, so I got this kind of hastily drawn cathedral type thing looking here. If you ever wanna refresh your SketchUp window, you push this little refresh button and then obviously you can see it pop up here. I'm on version 1.0.1.3 as you can see here. And this is the uh, paid version too. So I think some of this is not, like I think width is not available in the free trial. Obviously it's nice to be able to control how wide the rendering is and the number of renderings I think too is a thing that's not uh, it's not included in the free trial. Yeah, let's just go down these options here. So geometry override, obviously we don't have very detailed geometry here, but um, this slider will control how much the AI looks at your original image versus kind of coming up with its own ideas for what to show. Material override is for, of course this doesn't have any materials on it, but if, if you had a, a model that was a little more developed that had materials on it, this slider would either say, pay attention to those materials or completely override them. Um, obviously width, we saw a number of renderings you can do. Let's just start for two. Once you hit the render button, this is how many images it'll generate, whether or not it's an interior, turbo nature, which is a great uh, name for a button. Really everything should have turbo on it. Turbo push pull. So turbo nature, hey, sure. just adds a lot of extra vegetation and nature and stuff in there. Atmospheric adds kind of fog and does kind of help blend in the borders uh, as you'll see from some of the results here. Let's throw atmospheric on and then it's not aerial. So there's so many different resources out there for writing good AI prompts. I just had one already written, so I'm going to copy that and just paste it right in here and prompt strength is how much it pays attention to the words in here. Muted results or more dramatic results. Uh, hey, let's go dramatic on it. Bump that up a little bit and hit render. So it does take a little bit to, uh, to generate the renders. As you can see, it didn't really take too long to generate the geometry for the model, but well, here we are. So yeah, as with all AI, I think there's some kind of playing you have to do with changing the prompt, switching out stuff to get kind of the desired result. Obviously this is kind of, looks a lot like the model where it's in this, you know, infinite plane. There's no real backgrounds or anything like that. So let's try to change this to say, like it's put it in a, on an island or something. On an island in a lake. <laughs> All right, tweak some of these around. Do I know what I'm doing? No, but it's all about uh, just testing stuff out and seeing what what pops out. Um, so I'm cutting this for uh, for time's sake, but as you can see, some of these, a little bit under 10 seconds to render this. 
improbable. <laughs> I don't know when you would uh, use this, but it's cool for how little geometry um, was originally there, what it generated. So let's look at some more um, practical applications. So I have this simple model, this couch here. Suppose I had a, like I like the silhouette, I like the kind of the design of this tuxedo style sofa, but I wanted to get a look at it with different upholstery and I couldn't really find a good matching photo online. Like suppose you're uh, creating a mood board or something and you can't quite find the exact right photo. I think this would be pretty, pretty nice use case for that. So I'll just open up the old extension here. So I'll use a couple different prompts that I created in here to kind of get a different look at what this couch style could be. Okay, so here's kind of a mid-century modern uh, light leather sofa. Let's see what that would look like in a blue velvet Chesterfield. Okay. Or maybe an orange Scandinavian style. Hmm. And sometimes it might not be the exact look you're going for, so you might, sometimes nice to just fiddle around with these and see if there's one that might give you uh, more of the idea that you're going for. Uh, so let's try one more style. Uh, just do one rendering and see what this one looks like. Um, no. So it's you're getting an idea of what this could be used for, for concepts. Like, like I said, your client likes this tuxedo style couch. You have a couple different options. You could go for upholstery. You could do this. You could show them this. A couple different options that it might take a long time to find the exact, you know, blue Chesterfield tufted couch that you had in mind. But by generating it here, you get the exact camera angle and lighting and everything that you would want for your mood board. All right, one last example. Um, we have this kind of rudimentary city scene set up. So let's open up the render here, widen that up. And let's just play around with some of these other toggles here. Material override, because we have some materials in here, we'll do a little bit less. Geometry is fine. Let's do something turbo atmospheric and say city courtyard architectural rendering, lots of people, um, night, neon lights, lush vegetation. Yeah. Spell that right. And then, um, yeah, I got this nature and atmospheric on. Speaking of atmospheric, let's go full moon. Now we're talking. Render. Oh, wow, they're seeing it. <laughs> it's like a big fountain. It's a wishing well, but it's uh, everyone's standing in the fountain. That's pretty unique. Hey, you know, uh, I never would have thought of that. So maybe it's uh, AI giving us ideas on how to do stuff. And let's just maybe change some of these materials. So let's turn atmospheric off. Let's say full moon off. And let's see what it does if we, for instance, change. Of course, this is just loose geometry. I don't worry about that. Uh, let's try to do this wood. Let's do like a. And sometimes it's just the color is enough to say, OK, this is wood. Uh, obviously, this doesn't really look nice, but we could say like timber. Uh, facade, building, building. And let's give it a shot and see what that looks like. Mm, interesting, City of Lights, I got this quilt wall back here. But you know, it's unique. I kind of like this idea of this uh, facade here that you can kind of see through. I've got the vegetation, you know, climbing up. That's kind of cool. Uh, and again, these people aren't like, if you zoom in, not photorealistic, but just as in like a, you know, architectural concept, it's an idea and it gives the, the, the illusion that there's uh, people populating this courtyard. So right on, that's cool. Let's do one uh, that's an aerial view. So 
I'll just kind of readjust my view here a little bit. Um, maybe you know it's a helicopter view. We'll reset this. Make sure that it's right and say is aerial architectural rendering. Let's say photo realistic. Now I don't really know much about prompts, but I feel like I see a lot of people do ultra detailed. That sounds like it would help. Um, and let's do sunny day. Yeah, sunny day. And um, let's say brutalist style. And I have this brutalist prompt. Give that a shot and say material, forget materials. Yeah, let's see what we get. Ah, interesting. Yeah, I like this kind of fusion of the, uh, you know, nature with the concrete there. And the extension does save, as you've seen, save your previous renderings on here. What I wish it would do is save your prompt, too, associated with each one, because I don't remember how we got this little fountain courtyard here. There's something like timber facade, but I don't remember exactly what it was to get this output. Um, and it would be nice if I, when I looked through these, it would have the, the prompt that generated it. One way to, uh, you know, have the image with the prompt is copy all these uh, prompt words, the keywords and stuff. And when you save it, when you, this is how you export an image, I have just been copying and pasting it into the tags field here. I'm sure there's something similar on Windows. And that, uh, that way, when you export it, then you'll get the image export and then also all of the tags. That way, if you have a particular image that was successful at hitting the, the vibe, the look that you're going for, you have all these tags for the text prompt saved in there. So you can copy and paste those if you wanna to try to replicate or you know if there's particular keywords that uh, gave a style that you were looking for, you could you reuse those and uh, remember what you used for each particular image. And again, it's imperfect, right? Not everything resolves, you know, as you would expect from an AI image generation thing, but it gets the idea, it gets the mood. And that's really where I think this uh, thrives as of right now is getting a particular angle uh, and a particular mood from whatever model you're looking at. So as with any AI application, there's some kind of things you have to work around and some things you have to kind of tweak to make sure you get right um, before you get the output that you want. Um, and it's not really as repeatable as a traditional rendering software, but it could be good for concepting or, you know, one thing that came to mind when I was uh, using it was because the, the camera angle and the kind of the composition of the image and stuff is really what it retains, uh, doing like storyboards or some kind of pre-visualization for um, animatics or something like that would be really useful because it retains the geometry and the kind of the composition of the image, uh, which could be important as well as kind of adding your own mood in for whatever it might be for a mood board or like I said, like a concept art or something like that. So, um, hey, the sky's the limit for, for you to use this uh, extension. So hey, if you used it, let us know what you think of it in the comments. Um, and uh, yeah, AI rendering, man, got to get on the train. All right, thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Don't forget to like this video, um, and hey, check out more SketchUp videos in the future. So thanks for watching. Take it easy.